right here. Hello everybody and welcome to Kangaroo English. I'm Christian. I'm Andrew. <laughs> and um, this is a, a surprise, a surprise live English class. Normally the live class is on Tuesday, but today, Monday. Surprise. <laughs> um, and today we're going to be talking about street English. Yeah, gangster life. Gangster, gangster English. <laughs> the way that... Um, the way we're going to be talking about the type of English that, um, that, you know, people speak normally on the streets of England, you know, not the kind of English that you find in textbooks. Um, and so today we're going to be talking about vocabulary, we're going to be talking about pronunciation, uh, and we're going to be talking about some sentence, some grammatical sentence structures for street English. Slang. Some slang. Uh, so this is this is British British street English, okay? Not not Australian street English. So yes, yeah, so hello to everybody who's with us today. Hello to Sadi, uh, Kushal, hello, Kushal, Kaiser Kaiser Chang. Nice name, though, Kaiser yeah, Chang. Cool name. Carrie, Yereshev, um, Coco the Coco Monster. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> the Coco Monster in Thailand. Lenny Escobar from... I think Lenny's from... Um, from Colombia. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jacek. Zaza. The French Leo. Ricardo. Fourcat. Um, yes. Hello, everybody. Oh, no. Sorry. Lenny's not from Colombia. She's from Brazil. Oh. Sorry, Lenny. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a terrible memory. <laughs> We have Juan from Argentina, and Jacek is from Poland. From Poland. There's, there's a massive, a big community of Polish people in England, no? Yeah. Yeah. A lot. A lot. And Juan from Vietnam, and Claudio from Brazil as well. Uh, or Claudia, no, Claudio. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, let's, let's start to talk about some, some street English. Um, so where, where, where do you live? I start. live in Haverhill. Okay, where Haverhill. where is Haverhill? Cam like, Cam like Cambridgeshire. Okay, so if I draw England, pretty much like this. Right? <laughs> this is England. Looks something like this. And where's and then here we have like London. Okay. London's like here. Okay. And where's where's Haverhill? Yeah. Okay. So here's Haverhill. Okay. Here. Now, <clears throat> hello, hello, Ricardo in Brazil. Hello to everybody in Brazil. Okay, now, as you can see, my, my typical artistic skills, the best. So, Andrew speaks what's called estuary English. Okay, so here, here we have the, the River Thames, okay? Here you have the River Thames coming into London. And in this estuary area, so it's an area like this, pretty much, in all of this area here, okay, we have we have s people who speak estuary English. So you can find this type of English in a big area of people, okay. Um, so let's let's start to talk about some vocabulary. Vocabulary. Yeah. So let me just um, just one second. I forgot. Quite a sorted Christian. No, no, I forgot. I forgot to get something to clean the board with. Use my hand. No, no, no. Oh man, okay. <clears throat> Important. Okay. So um, the first the first piece of new vocabulary that you're going to learn today is this word lit. So what does lit mean? Okay? It's an it's an adjective. An adjective, what does it mean? Lit means it's cool, it's it's something that's good, happy and very, very cool vibes. Okay, so can we, can you give us an example in a sentence? Uh, this is lit. This is lit. Like and the nightclub is lit. The nightclub is lit. Because remember that lit, lit is related to something that is a light, something that is on fire. Oh, oh. lit this club. <laughs> 
<laughs> Andre said that <laughs> said that this class is lit. It's very good, Andre. Love it. And he said, "Look, Sajiv says adjectives is quality. Light is a is a something that lights up." The so it's, yes, it's different. Light and lit is different. So Garcia Garcia says that he has a lit test. Yeah, that works. That yeah, works. I don't know. Because normally lit is something good, right? Yeah, it's good. like exciting and it's on fire and it's, it's good. Okay? Lit. lit is a bed in French. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's like a nice vibrational sensation. We've learned something here. Yeah. French word. Yeah, lit, lit is like entendido in Spanish. Yeah, it's like something. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay, so now uh, another. another um, Another adjective for you, okay? This one. Okay, this is the word. Peng. Peng. P-E-N-G. Peng. So it's another adjective, and normally it's used to describe a person. Yeah. And what does it mean? So, um, like, I would say... Not to, intelligent, Elanise, no. I would say to a girl, if she was looking very nice, beautiful, you look peng. So, Peng is like attractive. Yeah, attractive. Hot. Yeah, hot. <laughs> and can you use it? You can use it for boys and girls, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, both. Okay. So, so there you go. So, if, if you see someone and they're looking attractive, they're looking hot, you can say, You look Peng. You look Peng, girl. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like cute or hot. Can you, can you say that it's <laughs> Sherlock is Peng? <laughs> <laughs> can you can you is it similar to cool like can you yeah, say cool. like can you say like this party is pain yeah well? yeah you can you can describe it as an adjective as well like lit okay well. okay okay nice so if you like clothes or something you could say this looks pain okay um what about this one another adjective for you Fresh. Now, normally, <laughs> Sebastian says his legs are ping. And French, French Leo wants to know, can you say she has a ping bottom? Can yes. you use it to talk about a specific... Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, fresh, fresh normally we would use to talk about... Exactly, exactly, Sajiv. We would use it to talk about fresh fish or fresh vegetables. But in this case, no. It's another adjective. What does it mean if... if so, so uh, fresh. You can have something like... Like a girl, again. Like, you're, look, <laughs> you're looking fresh. Or a boy, you're looking fresh. You're but looking cool. What's the difference between you're looking fresh and you're looking peng? Peng means more of like... Uh, a describing word to say like... You're hot, you're fit. Like, like your body, your yeah, face, you're, you're attractive. Yeah, okay. you're attractive. But you're fresh? fresh means like you're kind of looking cool. Ready, oh, like your clothes, ready, maybe. Like you're ready to go to the nightclub. Or... Okay, okay. So fresh describes like your your appearance, like in that moment, like yeah. the clothes you're wearing, your hair, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Okay, so fresh describes yeah how you're dressed. No, it's not related to pure. No, not related. To so I'm so fresh. Go yeah. Garcia, Garcia says. Garcia, I don't know, Garcia, I don't know if you're a, a guy or a girl, but you're fresh. No, no problems. I like that. <laughs> can you or say fresh peng bottom? <laughs> yes, you can. Fresh peng bottom. <laughs> Fashionable? Fashionable. Oh, yes, I would say. Like, you're looking fresh, meaning like, cool, you're looking good, like, with what you're wearing. Okay. So, um, Garcia wants to know, can you say you look unfresh? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Like, you're just looking bad. You're looking bad, <laughs> unfresh. <laughs> and he wakes up in the morning. So Yeroshev wants to know how. What's the difference between saying pal and mate and fellow and guy when when you're in the street? Okay, so I think we need to look at some of these words. So, okay, Andrew, would you would you ever call someone pal? No, I don't think I would. Pal is out. No. Okay, would you ever call somebody mate? Yeah. Yes? Yes. And what, what what circumstances would you call someone mate? Like, you could say, uh, I have mates. Okay. Or, um, you are my mate. So it's more like friend. Yeah. Would you, if you're like in the supermarket, would you be like, hey mate? Yeah, you're right, mate. 
Okay. Fellow. <laughs> fellow. Would you say, oh, he's a nice fellow? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this word fellow is really, it's like a quite an old-fashioned word now, okay? People don't really say fellow, it's very posh. So no. Okay, we're eliminating fellow, right? Yeah. Okay. Guy? People do say pal. It's not like everybody doesn't use it. People do say I don't because I live in England. <laughs> I don't use it. Okay, so what about guy? What about what about guy? If you call someone hey guy or there's this guy or I don't I don't use it, but I I know quite a few people do. I think I think maybe the difference is that a mate is like your friend, yeah. right? But a guy is more like someone you don't know. Yeah, like when you talk about someone, you can say, "Well, this guy just came up to me," or "This guy walked here," or something like that. Yeah, it's like to talk about someone you don't really know, but yeah. instead of saying somebody or someone, you say guy. Yeah. And man. What's up, man? What's up, man? That's slang. That's slang. And and there's actually another word, another piece of vocabulary which we're going to learn now, which is of course right now. Bro. 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 So when, when do you use bro when you're talking to somebody? I use it a lot. Yeah? When, when I'm talking to Christian, sometimes I go, what's up, bro? <laughs> he's my bro. Yeah, he's my bro. <laughs> um, and, and would you use it to talk about people that you, like if you meet someone you don't really know that well, would you say, hey? Yeah, bro? you wouldn't say bro. No? No. Ah, uh, okay. It's only people that you know well, like your mates, okay, so, friends. So a bro's like a close friend. Yeah, like a close friend, like... Bro is short for brother, um, that you're kind of calling them brother, but you're they're not fully your brother, so it's just bro. <laughs> so Sajif so says that he just had a shower to make himself fresh. Love that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Huckleberry Finn says he thought that you were James. <laughs> no, I'm not James. Flatmate, schoolmate. I'm, fr I'm fresher than James. <laughs> <laughs> he is fresher than James, don't forget that. He, he, I am his brother. <laughs> yeah, he's James's brother. He's James's brother. Um, uh, so what about buddy or dude? Let's dude. talk about that. Dude is Australian, but English people do use it. Okay, so here's another word, dude. It's another word you can use to talk about people. Hey, dude. I do I do like to, like, babies and stuff. I was like, you're right, little dude, or... Yeah, I think now, I think maybe in the past it was yeah. more fashionable. I think now dude is a bit, a bit old fashioned, I think yeah. a little bit, yeah. And buddy, well, yeah, again, I feel, I feel like you're right. I think buddy, maybe buddy is something that you would say to like children, right? Yeah, you'd be like, you're right buddy, like, are you okay or something like that? Are you all right? How, yeah. how are you? Teaching yeah. them words. Yeah, so I think definitely for for children, you know, more like it's, it's definitely more soft, like, like baseline stuff. Mm-hmm. Start mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, rumor. Okay, buddy. Uh, so yeah, so so just just for some of you who don't know, okay, that you can use mate. You can use mate to talk about somebody who is like your partner. In, in activities, for example, you can have a flatmate, yeah. a housemate, roommate, roommate, classmate, in football, you have a teammate. Yeah, a teammate. So your mate is like a, a, a person, not necessarily a friend, okay, a person who does an activity with you, like living together, doing sport. But if you add an end on the end, uh, if you add an S on the end, it's more than one person. Roommates, classmates, teammates, teammates, nice. Okay, um, this someone wants to know: Can you call? Do you ever call somebody a fashionista? A fashionist. It's like a fashionista, like somebody who's like. Have you ever used that word? No. No. I think. I think really, if you if you think about the way that Andrew speaks, you know, words like fashionista and. These words which are more European, not really, okay? I would say, like, someone's got fashion, but not fashionista. Yeah, okay. So someone can be uh, fashionable, right? Yeah. Or trendy or... Yeah. Fresh. Fresh. Peng. Peng. <laughs> um, and, and, and something that we're going to talk about later in the class, 
is the influence of Jamaican patois, Jamaican language on English, which you don't realize, but we're going to talk about this soon. Okay. So, um, yeah, so fellow, fellow is old fashioned. Um, <laughs> she's my mate. Indeed, she has a fresh pen bottom. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, uh, let me just have a look. Uh, Ooh, with guys, actually. Yeah. You can you can uh, turn up with like a group of friends, and you can say hello, guys. Um, let's see. Ter- uh, Teresa May is not my bro. <laughs> Um, I'm from Uruguay and my grand, my granddad who is 89 is watching you with me. Well, language, you know, language has changed a lot in, in 89 years. When, when your granddad was living in Uruguay, when he was younger, the Spanish that he was speaking, can you imagine if you ask him about the Spanish vocabulary he used in Uruguay 80 years ago? It changed a lot, you know. The main I thing know. is, we say, hello, granddad, in English. <laughs> hello, granddad. <laughs> it's good to have you in class, my man. It's good to have you in class. My man. My man. My man. Um, Christian, do you know how a girl can call a man who is her friend? Can you say a, ma- a mate or a buddy or... Yeah, you can say mate, buddy. Um, you can say... Girlfriend or boyfriend, but you have to state the boy and the friend are separate. Yeah. You can't just say, um, he is my like boyfriend. You've got to say boy, but he is my friend. Yeah, it's complicated. Like in English, like, like if you have a girl and she says, yeah, last night I went out with my girlfriend... And then you're not sure if she means romantic girlfriend or just a friend who is a girl. Yeah. So other languages have a distinction between girlfriend and a friend who's a girl, but English. So sometimes, but men would never say, I went out with my boyfriends. No, no, no. You would say, I went out with my mate, pal, buddy, something like that. Not fellows. No, not fellows. <laughs> when you didn't go out with your fellows. I went out with my fresh buddy. <laughs> um, housemate, teammate. Oh, Lola wants to know, can you say beer mate? Beer mate? I suppose you can. It's a good question. Yeah. A beer mate, a person who drinks beer with you. I love it. I think maybe you invented a new word. Yeah. Beer mate. Yeah, I don't think anyone's used that. It's one thing that I hope for all of you. I hope that you all have beer mates. Or wine mates. Or gin and tonic mates. Or, you know, hey, water mates, if you're a healthy living person, you know, why not? <laughs> okay, is your girlfriend your mate too? I guess they are, mm. but they're your mates, but you treat them with more <laughs> respect, I think, if you get what I mean. Yeah, I think, I think that if you're talking about your girlfriend and you call and you tell your friends my mate... It's not. No, you'd it's not have good. to. You'd have to say she's my girlfriend. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Habib wants to know why do we always start a live class when he's on the toilet? <laughs> oh, nice one, soulmate. Soulmate, yeah. What is a soulmate? I'm kind of confused about that one actually myself. Okay, so Pro Gamer has a great question here. Um, the answer is yes. And try and cut yourself, please, as much as possible. <laughs> uh, comrade, yeah. Okay, so let's let's have a look at some more. Um, let's have a look at some more vocabulary. So <laughs> there are some crazy people commenting in this group. So let let's talk about a situation. If you if you meet someone in the street, okay. One option is you can say this, right? You can say this. And what's the pronunciation? What's up? What's up? And, what's and be- up? before you were like elongating, you were like, what's up? Yeah, you were like, what's up? <laughs> like shouting over the road, what's up? What's up? And this is basically like, what's up? What's up? What's happening? How are you? Yeah. What are you doing? Okay. And this is, this isn't too, this is not too, this is quite common. But there's another one which is a new a new one for me, which is this, okay? 
Now, this is the number one, right? So the pronunciation is? Wagwan. Wagwan. And what does it mean, Wagwan? It means like, what's happening? What's up? What, what's going on in the hood? So imagine, like imagine if, if I see you in the street, I'd be like, what's up? And you'll be like, Wagwan. <laughs> like, when you, when you say, what's up, you don't reply with like, I'm good. It's just like, you say it back to them. So it's like saying, hi, hi, like, hello, hello. And then you go up to like, what's up, like, what's happening? So basically, if, if, if I ask you, if I say to you, wang wang, I don't expect you to answer me, no, really. No, no, ah. Other than, what's up, again, or wang wang. It's interesting. Yeah, I suppose it's, it's a bit like in French, right? You say, you know, ça va, and they say ça va, but no one actually answers the question. Yeah. Like, so if, I, if, if, I, if, if you say Wagwan, I say, well, I'm having a fantastic day. Thank you for asking. I would look confused and just be like, <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you have to remember, a lot of this vocabulary, you know, is very informal. And it's, um, it's, it's language that you will find people using every day on the street. Okay. And what's interesting is that maybe in one year or two years, this will disappear completely. You know, this... Or, or it could become permanent. Who knows? There was an interesting comment there. Yeah? By, is this English words? It's only, only people that speak slang. Mm. But if you speak to them, it, this isn't normal, normal words. This is like mixing it up kind of words yes. that young, young people or old use. And if you go to someone, hello, how are you? They would still understand you and know what to reply with. Well, the thing is, right, that this word, I don't know if you know, this is actually Jamaican. Is it? Yes, it's Jamaican and Jamaican, it's, it's, it's actually spelt like this, right? Yeah. Wagwan, okay. But text wagwan. talk. But, but in, yeah, if you're texting someone, you say wagwan. And there's actually lots of Jamaican words right now that are super popular in British English. Like for example, mandem. Mandem. Right, which is another which is another Jamaican word. Okay, mandem. And what is what is mandem? Mandem means like I don't actually know. It's like so your it's crew. Like, does it? Yeah. Oh, it's like the people. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Because you turn up with a group of friends who are like, "What's up with a mandem?" <laughs> and stuff like that. What's up with a mandem? So your mandem is like a group of people that you hang around with, and again, it's Jamaican patois. Okay, and if you um, if you saw my, if you saw my live class last week, right, then you will know that I talked about the influence of um, African dialects and South American dialects on English, and listen to the pronunciation, okay, of of some of these English words, the way that Andrew pronounces them. So, for example. Here's the classic, the classic word thing, but how how would you pronounce it now? Thing, but, but as well as well in in slang, ting. Exactly. Ting like ting. And, and I and I talked about this in the last class how how in in British English the th the th is disappearing slowly because it's difficult to say it, and people are saying ting. So can you give me an example of a sentence people like with ting? Uh. What's that ting over there? What's that ting over there? And there, you can, in slang, you can kind of change it to dare. Yeah, so exactly. Like, exactly. Here's, here's another example. Very nice. Very nice. So, the word there, the TH, okay, we are, it's, it's transforming into a D. Yeah, so like, like I just said, what, what's... Uh, what was it? Uh, what, what's that thing there? What's that ting over there? What's that ting there? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, if you, if you have a problem pronouncing your th, uh, no, in, if you go to the south of England, no problems, you could be ting, ting there. <laughs> <laughs> no problems at all. <laughs> or you can say there's a ting there. There's a ting there. And, and let's, let's, um, Let's have a look at um, Andrew's Andrew's pronunciation of this word as well, okay? 
butter. Yeah. But like it's butters butter. <laughs> but and you can you can hear that Andrew is using a very strong glottal stop. He's saying butter, right? There's no butter, right? Yeah, no. No, because when you're saying it in a fast kind of like, like for instance, mum can I have some butter on my bread. You kind of forget to say the butter, like you don't say it as, like as normal. But when you get to saying butter, and then you go to your mum, can I have some butter? You think actually, I sounded really posh. <laughs> so it's 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 crazy that that Andrew feels like if he says butter, it sounds posh. Yeah, like sounds too posh. Sounds too posh. So he has to he has to eliminate it to sound to sound normal. Yeah. Interesting. So, so you can kids. see that you know. So, and for people who are learning English, great. Okay, so th is disappearing. The the, the t, the t is disappearing. Saying butter, glottal stop. Okay, and another one. What about this one? Okay, how would you say that? Mother. Okay. How would you say though if you were talking with your friend? Mother. Mother. <laughs> yeah, like mother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I wouldn't use it. I'd say my mum, my mum. But okay. in like slang, mother. So again, you can see we have this we have this transformation of the th to the to the d mother. mother. Okay. Or or you might hear people also saying it like this, right? Like maybe like no. <laughs> 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 and <laughs> Andrew thought that was really funny. <laughs> or you might um <laughs> you might hear people pronouncing it like this with the two with a V instead, right? Would would you say that as well? Mother? Yeah, mother. Ma mother. So like lots of words you will you will see the TH <laughs> replaced with a V or an F. Okay, mother. Not muffer, no. <laughs> okay, so um, now it's your turn. I want I want you guys to make some sentences using some of this new vocabulary. Okay, so I want you to. Um, Andrew is terrible. Thank you guys. <laughs> um, to, uh, and and um, mm -hmm. and. Okay, so here's four words. Okay, we have fresh, ting, lit, and dare. So I want you guys, I want you guys to write a sentence. Terrible boy. Write a sentence with these words, okay? Let's see who can write the best sentence. We could say, can, can you invent a sentence with these words? Oh, I can do a Spanish one, sort of. All right, why, why is everyone mentioning about Despacito? Despacito is fresh. Despacito is fresh. So Abby, Abby is actually saying um, yes, and it's it's true, Abby. It's another another feature of um, of British English that the ing is pronounced as ink. Yeah. Like for example, if you say thing, you say think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's true. Like, and and if you combine various things, like if you say. I am thinking, right? Uh, no, that's a bad Can example. I but these off? Yeah. Okay, so let's... We'll, we'll get back to this point in a second, Abby, but El Elenice says, I have a fresh friend. Yeah, that's good. Okay, nice. Nice. I need a fresh pizza. <laughs> okay, Sajiv, no, we want, we want fresh, like the other meaning of fresh, like you're looking fresh. And, and actually, Elenice... I think that a fresh friend is not good because, remember, fresh is to talk about how you look in that moment. And so your friend could be peng, because they're always peng, but they can only be fresh at that moment. So you could say, my friend is fresh tonight. So, okay. if I was going out in this, I could say, I look fresh. He looks but fresh. But if tomorrow I go out in a jumper, hoodie, and trousers, and I don't look fresh, I look... I look oof, like bad. You you wouldn't say I look fresh. See. It was only the moment I looked fresh. Oh man, homie man says that we are a lit couple. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, 
Sajeev says, I have fresh dress. Yeah. Nice, nice. That dog over there is Peng. <laughs> I don't know if Did you... Did you do a point at me to say, like, I'm a dog? No, no, I'm saying, could you use Peng to talk about an animal? I think you could. Okay, I think you could. Okay, what about this from Samam Roma? There was a lit party. We were fresh and ready for some tings. Oh, oh, that is the best one going yet. Love it. Amazing. Well done. That girl is so fresh. It is mind melting. <laughs> love that. I love that. You guys are incredible. Best students. Best students. I, Alejandro says, I have a fresh look. Nice. Fresh Andy is there with teacher mate Christian. Oh, I like. I actually like that one, Andy. He's... Lolo, my beer mate is fresh like a Guinness. <laughs> oh, that was good, like Guinness. What the hell, Vanna? Okay, uh, fresh tings usually fun. <laughs> Look at this frivolously fanciful Fanny fried fresh fish furiously. <laughs> Damn that! That's a tongue twister. I don't know where you can where L G H gamer. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, where that came from? <laughs> His better ting is his fresh pen bottom. <laughs> nice. Um, nowadays, I live in Mexico. Please stop talking about Despacito. I'm listening to this song everywhere. Gonzalo. Yeah, Despa Despacito is like a virus. It's, it's taking over the world. Your hairstyle looks fresh. Of course it does. My hair... I don't have a hairstyle, but his... <laughs> but his, his is fresh. Great sentences, guys. Christian in the morning makes himself look fresh, but he forgets the hair. <laughs> now, um, it's it's interesting that um, that a lot of people think that that. It... Have a fresh bald head. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Milat. You know, a lot of people think that if you speak like this, that it's bad English. But it's really important when you're learning a language to realize that. Language, we have different types, different ways of speaking, okay? You can speak colloquial, informal with your friends, and you can speak English like you're going to a job interview, okay? But there's no such thing as bad or good or better English, okay? All language is equally valid. All language is equally as good. So... What you need to do is stop judging language. You, you don't want to say, this is bad and this is good and say this and this is correct. No. What you want to be is you want to be a language chameleon. You want to be able to use different types of language when you're with different people, right? So when he's with his friends, he's not going to talk like he's in a job interview and he's not going to call them fellows. Right. Yeah. Right, he's going to use the language which is appropriate for the situation, and but when he's with his grandparents or when he's in a formal situation, you change your language. You know, so don't don't judge language. Okay, in fact, take advantage take advantage of your ability to use different language at different times. Okay, so. That's my advice. Like, with this, I'm playing, I'm playing. Mm. So, with with uh, the slang, you take off the G. The G's gone. The and G is gone. Playing. Playing. And, 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 and again, this the, the reason for this is because it's difficult, right? To like... Yeah. Mm, like, I'm, mm, go, I'm mm. going to do something. Like, it just adds on that little, little extra word. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need it. So... People make it shorter by, I'm going to do something. Nice. Nice. Okay. Let's look at, let's look at another word here. Okay. Bear. Oh. <laughs> now, um, normally this, well, this is an adjective. Okay. It's an adjective to describe like something like naked, like naked, right? But, but um, we can also use bear as an adjective to mean like a lot. Yeah. For example, can like, you think of an example? Like there's many ways you can say it. Like if... <laughs> Your head is bare. 
<laughs> yes, Sophie, my head is bare. But this is another example. But okay? I could say, like, to Christian, if I was getting annoyed, I would say, you're bare annoying. You are bare annoying. You are very annoying. And in slang, it would be, you, you're bare annoying. Not annoying. Okay, again. So he's, he's saying that you're dropping... So this G... This G at the end, which is difficult to pronounce because you have to okay, you have to block off block off your throat, you have a nasal sound. We're getting rid of this, right? Bear annoying. So bear can mean very, like you're bear annoying. You're very annoying. But also it means a lot. Like you could say, um like if if you're bear loads of chop no, bear loads chocolate. Or you have bear chocolate. Yeah, bear chocolate. You have bare chocolate. You have a lot of chocolate. You have bare chocolate. You you have bare views on your video. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Andrew yeah. Andrew made a music video. You should check it out on his Facebook page, his music video. Andrew Conroy. Andrew Conroy. Music video. Share it. <laughs> so yeah, bare means pretty or quite or very or totally. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So in this class we have bare students. And they are bare, they're, they're bare happy, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> bare happy, all of them. Okay, so um, one, one final thing we're going to talk about, okay, is we're going to talk about, <laughs> we're going to talk about some, some grammatical structures that people would use in, in, in estuary English. So... So here's an example of a typical sentence, right? So you no, see... No, you've got to take the you away. Yo, Lincoln. Oh, okay. Sorry. So with you as well, you can take away the end word, you. So it's yo. So yo. you're looking piff. So it's like one, one. So when you meet someone, it's like yo. But you can use it in a sentence like yo, looking piff. Wow. So we can see, we can see that... that in, 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 a, in a correct, you know, grammatical structure, we would say, you are looking piff. We have the you are because it's, it's present continuous, right? But here, no. It's, you're looking piff. So, if, when, oh, and Alejandro wants to know, what does piff mean? Piff. Yeah, what is piff? What does it mean? Piff, piff means you look good. But it's like... Didn't, didn't we say it was like... We didn't say, we only talked about peng and fresh. Pit, oh, piff is like peng, but it's like you look good, your sense of style is good, like you're rolling, you're rocking it. Yeah. Sort of thing. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it's like gorgeous, like attractive, um, you know. And, and so what about, yeah, so Ross is wondering about the pronunciation of this. Like, can you say, can yo, you yo can you say ya? Yeah? No. Yeah, no, it has to be yo. Yo. Yo, look and piff. And again, that you will find that this is the influence from American English coming from South America, coming from Africa into, into British English. You know, the whole gangster culture, the rap culture. Okay. Um, so what I'm saying is if you're using present continuous, you can eliminate your verb to be. You can say, you're looking fresh. You're looking fresh. Uh, uh, or if you ask a question, can, can I can I ask this question? Can I ask this question? Is that good? That question, yeah. yeah? Good, that question's good. Okay. For example, what you're doing. Yeah. So again, we so the verb to be. We're eliminating the verb to be from the present continuous from the question. It's not what are you doing. It's what you what do. doing. What you're doing. <laughs> Okay, and one one other um, grammatical structure. <laughs> what do you do watching you? <laughs> <laughs> Joshua, that's perfect, my friend. And look, Joshua eliminated the yeah, G. G. Love it. Love it. Love it. Alejandro says, you are piff with that pink hat, young man. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Pedro Belmont. How are you? Uh... Again, Gossia yeah. says you look piff in See, the pink hat. I told you the hat was good when I bought it. I bought Man. it to, today. Rossa says, where you're from? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. That's perfect. You are writing like a proper 
estuary English British native right now. Good work, Rosser. Um, okay. We're going to combine a few different things here. Whoops. <laughs> No. Why was yo doing this? So you can see we have um, we have the th here, okay, and we have the g disappeared, and we have the yo up here, okay. So what's interesting is we have you, we have you, but we're not saying why were you, why were you? No, saying why was you. You, you have to use the, you have to conjugate the verb to be incorrectly. And, and it is almost phonetic, right? It's like phonetic stuff. Piff, piftacular. <laughs> Maria, your English is piftacular, I tell you. So yeah, so why, why was you doing this? Why was you, Andrew, why was you doing this? To teach people slang. <laughs> um... Okay, and finally, Andrew wants to teach you, he wants to teach you a verb, okay, a verb. The verb is to pull. So what does it mean if you, if you pull somebody? Alright, so, oops, if, I have big, I have big feet. Trick. <laughs> if, if you was to pull, hmm. you would go out again in the nightclub. Like, if I was to go to the nightclub, I could get, I could pull a girl or a boy and and like each other like love and for that night kiss whatever and have fun okay so pull is like to like get someone to <laughs> pull, pull pull a girl pull, right like, pull, like get get a girl fancy okay get her to fancy you okay Sebastian says, hey, yo, pull with me. Um, Sophie Sophie says that she doesn't pull, she pushes. Ooh, I like that, I like that. It's good mix up. Okay, um, is it like a connection or like a crush? Or is it like a one night stand? I think, I think the verb pull means that, means that you, you, you sort of have a girl or a boy who's interested in, how can I describe it? It's hard to describe. It, 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 it means that you have success in either kissing them or, yeah, maybe you take them back to your house and have sex with them. Yeah, maybe. Um, but not, not, not necessarily. It, it just means that you had success Attract attracting, attracting a girl or a boy. Yeah. Um, your sneakers pulled the dance floor. <laughs> so... Um, so yeah, so for example, when Andrew goes out, okay, when Andrew goes out in his pink hat, he says, I pull bare girls. Right? Yeah. So he pulls a lot of girls. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, listen, today was just a quick class. Um, with Andrew to talk to you guys about some street English. Um, and so we've talked about vocabulary and pronunciation and, um, and also some, some sentence structures. So now you guys have to, to go and practice. And, and also, you know, think about, you know... <laughs> Sophie wants to see Sophie wants to see Andrew's six pack. Actually, Andrew has an eight pack. He is that ripped. <laughs> um, so yeah, so now when when you hear people speaking, okay, just see if you notice. See if you notice some of these little things like the pronunciation, some of the some of the vocabulary. Ten pack? I don't think you can get a ten pack. I don't know if you have a I think eight is max. Yeah, you can use some of this vocabulary to try and pull a girl. Why not? And you can uh, say girl, gal. So I'm going to pull bare gals. Gals. <laughs> Sebastian. Not, not guys, not guys, not guys. <laughs> yes. 
I have a melted chocolate pack. <laughs> a one pack. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, and I think that if you start to listen for some of this vocabulary and pronunciation, you will really notice it in television series, in popular music. You know, it's, it's really... If you download some lyrics for some popular music from the top 40, you will find a lot of this vocabulary, okay? It's not, this is not abstract. This is not only for people on the street. This is language that people are using in reality every single day. And not just a few people, millions of people who live in London and in the surrounding area. So, I hope you enjoyed this class. Thank you, Andrew. It's okay. He's my bro. I'm glad to help you guys learn. Yeah, so. it was amazing. So, don't forget to connect with me on Facebook, on Instagram. Check out Andrew's music video. And um, I will see you again in class soon. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class. See ya. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Lots of love.